Welcome back to the Helium Group, where we mine cryptocurrency, and in particular, the Helium uh, token, HNT. Um, we are currently working with the Panther X, and yes, this is a uh, SX1308 chip, and I have um, six more of the new ones, the, 13, uh, the SX1302, and then we also work with the minted gold and black spots. Miners, we have uh, 12 of those uh, deployed and one of the Panther X2s. Um, today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about the antenna. Um, I had a uh, supporter, a uh, subscriber, ask me to do a uh, evaluation on the Signal Plus 8 dBi antenna. And as you can see here, I actually have it attached to a Nano. Uh, VNA tester. Um, this gives you the signal rating and as you can see there the low spot is where you actually want the uh, antenna to uh, reside. Let me. So in the lowest spot, I'm going to turn this around so I can look at it. It is tuned for 890 megahertz. Uh, let's see if we can get that to come in there this right there. Nope, guess I'm not going to get that. Anyways, so um, we're going to give you an idea. This is actually going to be connected to the Panther X SX1308 um, that I've had in place for several weeks. Um, I have tested it with various different antennas. Um, I have put different cables on it. I have compared it head to head with the uh, a rack gold spot. Um, just to make sure that I'm uh, getting a uh, true like-for-like uh, -like comparison. Um, I also have here, I want to show you what m our preferred antennas are. They are the rack family of antennas. Um, but uh, a supporter uh, asked if we would test the signal. Uh, eight. This is a, get this bad boy back here. This is a Rack 8 DBI antenna. Um, they are approximately, approximately the same size height. So if I can get them back there, um, you can see slight difference. Um, I have connected the Rack to the uh, VNA, the Nano VNA. Um, and I do want to show you something about this just because I've showed this before But if you haven't watched one of these videos before watch what happens when you actually start moving your hand up the antenna See the disturbance that's in there the beauty about the uh, rack 8 is you actually get a really good signal performance all the way up whereas some of the Amazon uh, antennas you don't quite get the same performance level so tomorrow I will be hooking up the signal plus 8 dBi antenna where I currently have a uh, rack wireless 8 uh, dBi antenna connected to the PX2 13, uh, SX1308 chip and what I want to do is just give you one thing here and if you want to see some cool gadgetry hang around for a little bit longer uh, towards the end, but to support uh, or to, to speak to my supporter that asked about the Signal Plus, um, I do want to show this over. And sorry about the crappy camera work. I am not a uh, super good, you know, um, YouTuber. Um, but what you're looking at here, I can show you, zoom in. Okay, this is my accounting of the. Uh, rack. Let me get this off the holder. Uh, this is the rack um, when it was at this location. We're now the, and you can see here on a seven day average, you can see 0.16. Um, we can go up a little higher, 0.1. Uh, sorry, that's actually the wrong one. That wouldn't be 135. Um, and then let me go down a little bit further. You can see it did a 0.294.
And over the same period, people talking about the um, Panther X and all the problems that people have been complaining about. Um, here's what it was back at the end of January before they did any updates. It averaged a 0.142 the beginning of February, 0.172, and then 0.203. I believe that's sometime uh, right before the update. And uh, in the last four days, it's done 0.219. So on par with the rack, um, using the exact same equipment. Um, I'm very happy with the PX2. This particular miner happens to be in a uh, kind of a really crappy spot in town. Um, and I'm going to actually flip over now to show you. Um, this is where we are at. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit here. Like I said, sorry, I've got this on a spongy holder. But um, if you look at this, this is today in the last 24 hours, 0.19 over the last seven days, 0.143, 2.6. And of course you can see I put it up right about there. So it's almost 30 days worth of production for HNT, um, almost five, uh, probably will be over five. That's not bad for this area. And largely because literally, if I were to take and, uh, how can I do this? Anyways, if I were to click out of here, click on another one of these, oops. I'm gonna come back over to that hex which is right there. Do you see that big blue thing right there? Those are two riverbeds that converge. And the PX2 is in this hex. Um, and it is at one of the lowest spots in the entire city I live in. And literally, right where this number two is, is a big giant ridge that starts and it extends the entire valley expands it goes upwards from that point um, so it just gradually gets higher you can see a, a 9,000 foot mountain range is right here and then to the south right down here's a mountain range that's 9,000 this one right here is 7,000 and there's a mountain range over here that's like 5,000. So, you know, we sit down in this valley, um, going back to where the PX2 is. There you go. So, not bad for an 8 dBi antenna that's 27 feet up off the ground. Um, it's reaching um, this has got to be 30 plus miles, um, these outer reach areas. I know to right about there, that's five miles. So maybe it's even more than that. But um, that little hex right there is about five miles away from my house. I know because my kids went to school there. Anyways, um, so uh, great information about... Um, the PX2, I'm happy with it. I am excited. I've got six more. They're in hold, on, on hold uh, with customs at uh, the local city FedEx. It's supposed to be released, and I should get them on Monday. And at that time, I will be switching out the SX1308 PX2 with the um, SX1302 uh, Panther X2. And then in the coming months, I'll actually be switching that over to a couple of Bobcats that I've been waiting on for over 20 weeks now. When I was told 12 to 20 weeks, um, I don't have a lot of room to complain about uh, the Rack or the Panther X. I order them and I get them literally weeks later. I would have had the new Panthers um, uh, four days ago if it weren't for the fact that I bought too many at one time and it uh, flagged uh, the customs 
uh, folks. Um, I do want to show you a couple of other things. So this is that part if you want to drop off and you're happy with the rack. I do want to talk a little bit more about antennas and give you some uh, some insight not only into the antennas um, that we use, but some of the other components. Um, cooling fans, um, we use this brand off of Amazon. They are a USB plug. Um, they do have three different settings, so you can uh, change them over the uh, course of time. These are really nice. They plug into like a, uh, a two inch uh, outlet. We use a PVC uh, uh, tube uh, or outlet and we just wedge it in there and uh, plug it in. Um, in some cases we're developing, uh, this is a five watt, um, actually this is right one, a five watt solar panel um, with a USB adapter on it. So we put this outside the miner uh, box. Um, I don't think I can, no, yeah, okay. This is the miner box, one of them that we use. Um, we install a, um, a exhale port here, and that's where the, the fan gets uh, mashed into the hole, and it just blows the air out. We take on the bottom, and this is where we drill all of our holes. We have an inlet hole. Um, we mount the miner inside of here and in a position where the air comes in across the miner and comes out. Um, these have a nice little lock box on them or a lock hole, so you can actually get a, a tiny little lock that goes in there. Um, you can see I've got uh, my chia farm behind me. Um, but we're going to be doing some more testing. Some of the other things that we use um, as an absolute standard are smart plugs. Um, this is the Govi brand off of Amazon. Uh, I can't tell you what they cost. I buy them in four at a time. Um, I will tell you they are incredible. You connect them to the internet where you have the miner and then out of here goes to the miner. If you need to power cycle the miner, you can just turn this off remotely and it powers down the miner, brings it back up. It's a way of you also telling if the miner is actually on when it says that it's offline or it looks like it's not producing. You can go to the web app for um, Govi and you can actually see that this device is still connected and online. So you know there's not an issue with the internet. It's likely something to go with the monitor. In some applications, we go with even a bigger uh, fan. This one actually has two, uh, one for the inlet, one for the outlet. Um, I live in the desert, so it's, uh, it gets hot here. Um, a new tool that we're looking to deploy is actually a USB smart plug. It's got a little Bluetooth button right there, if you can see it. Um, and this allows us, in the case where we're not using um, a power uh, source and more like a PoE injector uh, to power the miner or in our solar setup. Um, we have a solar unit where it's all powered off of solar panels. Um, the miner is actually plugged in to a um, solar controller and then this comes out of the solar controller and again we can connect that to the internet. Um, we do use uh, some T-Mobile hotspots, if you're not familiar. T-Mobile has a program where you can get uh, $5 a month for the chip. You go on uh, Amazon and you buy a hotspot for about 30 to 50 bucks. The chip goes in uh, for the $5 a month, you get 500 megs of data. And then they have a $10 a month and you get two gigs. So we're experimenting right now to see how much actual uh, data a helium miner uses and which ones use you know, more, so to speak. Um, whenever you do this, though, just be aware, you want to sync your miner uh, up to the point where you actually switch it over, uh, like unplug it from one internet resource, even if it's connected to your phones, put it over to the uh, solar setup and off you go. But um, in addition to that, um, I keep an assortment of a uh, variety of connectors, Oops. Um, a whole assortment of the various different little connectors because you never know uh, when you get an antenna, uh, some of them have um, certain ends and other ones don't and I always don't, uh, I don't always have the op option to uh, buy 
uh, a cord. I might be in a hurry, so I order one, and it has the end female to a SP or RP or whatever, SMA. Um, but I also keep uh, other uh, connector pieces. Um, you know, this one here is an end type on both. This one has the uh, N on one side, the SMA on the other. Uh, of course, if you're going outside, um, you have the female um, to a male. Um, and then the latest ones I've been buying, I think somewhere around here. I think I have one down in here. Um, no, I guess not. It's a uh, male to male um, lightning arrestor. Um, we live in the second highest lightning strike area in the United States, so it's uh, really important to uh, do that. And again, um, I did want to show you the Nano VNA uh, tester. Got it off of eBay. Um, probably not something that most people want to buy. Um, if you happen to be in the, the Tucson area and you, you want to test your antennas, you're welcome to reach out to me uh, through the Discord under the name Loquacious. Um, I do want to show you a couple of other things. So. This is the, in terms of antennas, Let's see if I can do this. This is the rack. Okay, they're both at the bottom there, like that. Okay, the shorter one is the rack 5.8. The taller one is the rack 8.0. You can see that there is a, you know, good uh, four or five inch difference. Um, this is the, This is the Amazon 5.8. So you can see there is at least six inches. And when I test this one, uh, the uh, Amazon one, it literally is one, almost one hand, a little bit more. Um, when you put your hand here, it interferes with the signal and the rest of this is essentially hollow. Um, kind of crazy. And then um, to give you again the idea, what we had talked about before, the difference between the Signal Plus and the Rack um, 8.0. I'm curious to see what this this one does and uh, report back to the supporter. But I do want to show you one more, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to show you this. This is an 8.0 DBI antenna. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. That is the Rack 8.0. This bad boy is twice as tall. And uh, this is one of the people in our group, our Helium group, that uh, he bought this one. Um, so I'm going to be putting that. I'm not quite sure. I might actually... Uh, Throw that up at our test center here, um, see how well it does. Um, other than that, um, please support the channel. Get down there, push that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want to know about more videos, please click on the, uh, the bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video. Uh, apologies to some of you that have been looking for a video. Uh, lastly, I don't have a video and probably won't be doing a video on the mini router with the built-in uh, VPN service. It essentially allows you to test bench or test two miners in the same place. Um, the uh, You have a secondary internet resource and like a second router at your house. You take the um, mini router, you connect it to it, then the miner connects wirelessly to the mini router. Um, it uses a VPN service to bypass your home. Um, you can look these things up on the internet. Uh, there's a ton of probably videos on them, but I, I, it's not my expertise. I have people that work for me that do that work for me um, because I'm busy running the business and um, doing these videos. So I do appreciate all your support. Uh, please comment if you have questions. Um, again, go over to the Discord in the Panther X um, or anywhere in Discord and look for me uh, at Loquacious. And I hope to talk to you guys soon. And uh, hey, happy uh, mining with HNT. Thanks for your support.